Okay, uh, I will do equa uh, problem 739 because problem 739 in the fourth edition is related to uh, one of the problems in chapter 9 that I want to base that problem in chapter 9 on. Um, and then I'll go back to that other problem. Uh, I think the problem that bases 739, one second, let me see, uh, that is... Uh, 917 so 9.17 is the problem I want to do next after this in case somebody is following so uh, they, to, to know what the utility of this problem is and but I'll of course do them in separate videos or separate recordings uh, okay so here I will derive an expression for the coherence length um, uh, and uh, uh, it has a frequency bandwidth of delta Greek letter V and express your answer in line with uh, delta lambda and mean with lambda zero so this is in chapter 7 I will go back and uh, uh, cover chapter 7 maybe later for now we know that the uh, coherence length uh, is equal to its a length so time times the uh, uh, sorry uh, s uh, velocity which is the wave is going at the speed of light times the time and that's called coherence time uh, that's discussed in chapter 7 uh, and uh, we know that uh, delta V or delta ugh, I don't like this V I'm gonna use F here okay so delta F is equal to 1 over uh, delta T uh, which makes delta T coherent time uh, equal to 1 over change enough so I'm using F for the frequency I don't like that letter V uh, because you know we call the velocity V so I don't want to confuse the two and uh, this is, by the way, uh, bandwidth. This is the bandwidth. Uh, and this delta T here is the coherent time. And so if I put these two together, I will get uh, my delta L C uh, to be approximately coherent length is C over ch oh, bad uh, bandwidth so uh, let's label this A okay now we know from the discussion of chapter 7 uh, that the change in W over k0 equals w over k0 uh, you could go back to uh, chapter 7 discussion for that and that has to equal c uh, the uh, the reason being is because the velocity of the group the group velocity of the wave or the velocity of the envelope um, is equal that's the speed with which the wave moves is equal to W over K okay uh, now um, so uh, what's this uh, Delta W this is Delta 2 pi F because that's what uh, W is over Delta now we know K 0 it's the propagation number is 2 pi over lambda 0 uh, the wavelength in vacuum and this is equal to 2 pi f over 2 pi oh I should put the bar here over lambda 0 okay so now uh, this becomes 2 pi
this is minus 1 over lambda square uh, times change in lambda. So this is, you can think of this as the derivative of 1 over lambda 0. It's, uh, you know, the, the chain uh, or quotient rule, uh, minus 1 over lambda 0 squared times the chain rule, which is the change in the wavelength. And this has to equal, I could cross these out, and I could cross these out. So this becomes uh, the frequency. And so now we have this over, I could cross one of these with one of these. And now if I flip this ratio, this becomes uh, bring this uh, here to the denominator. And there's a minus sign. Let's put the minus sign here. And so if I just take the magnitude of that, I will get delta F. I could remove the minus sign. And so change in the frequency is equal Let's call this B. And now I'm going to take equation A or equation B and plug it in for A to find the coherent length. And so if I do that, so plug B in A, we have uh, delta LC, coherent length. equals oops uh, let's see where do we have c over that c over okay but we know that uh, lambda 0 times the frequency that is just the speed of the wave which is C so I'm gonna replace C with that so so I'm gonna plug this here Uh, these two would cancel out uh, and I will get my coherent length equation to be lambda 0 squared over what time does it this is the sum of the equations I will be using to do problem 917.